Hello, my name is Sunita Kadian. Welcome to this video on IELTS Writing Task 2 Test Tips. Now, before we understand anything about the writing task 2, let's understand what you get in the writing test. What are the tasks that you get? How long the test lasts? There are two tasks in the IELTS Writing Test and it lasts for 60 minutes. Now, remember your writing test starts after you finish your listening and the reading tests. So first you take the li listening test, which lasts for 30 minutes, then the reading test, which lasts for 60 minutes. So you are mentally and physically exhausted by the time you start your writing test. So you need to be more prepared for it. It's because of lack of preparation at times that many students do not get the desired band score in the writing test. So task one is different for both academic and general training students, but task two is similar. It's a formal piece of writing and you are asked to write an essay. So the way the question comes to you, this task comes to you, in its response, you write an essay. So let's understand what type of essays you can expect in your IELTS writing task two. There are five types of essays that you can expect. It depends upon the instruction. Like the first one is the discussion essay. So here two viewpoints are given and you're asked to discuss or you may be asked to discuss both and give your opinion. For instance, uh, like of course these days because of the pandemic, things have changed. So it can be something like this, that some people think that homeschooling is better for children, while others opine that formal tutoring is needed. Discuss both. So the instruction can come like this. Then you have to just discuss both. The instruction can be discuss both and give your opinion. So in this case, you have to discuss both and give your opinion, which can be one-sided. You can cite any of them, or it can be a balanced opinion. The second type of essay that you can get is the opinion essay. So here the instruction changes. So let's look at the same statement that some people think that homeschooling is better for children while others opine uh, that formal tutoring is needed. What's your opinion? So the instruction can be only this much. What's your opinion? Or it can be in a different way. Only one opinion is given that some people think that homeschooling is better than formal tutoring. Do you agree or disagree? To what extent do you agree or disagree? So instruction can be either, uh, what's your opinion? Only this much. It can also be, do you agree or disagree? And the third way you can get the instruction for the opinion essays, to what extent you agree or disagree. So this is different. Accordingly, you write your answer. Now, the third one is advantage, disadvantage essay. Let's look at the same one. So everything, the way you uh, write your body paragraphs changes according to the instruction. And this is what you need to practice. So what do you get in the advantage, disadvantage essay? Uh, these days, many think that homeschooling is better than formal tutoring. What are the advantages and disadvantages of this trip? So you're going to write only the advantages and disadvantages of this. Or the instruction can come like this. Do you think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Next is the direct question essay. Again, let's look at the same situation. Some people are of the opinion that homeschooling is better than formal tutoring. Is it a good trend? Do you agree with it? So it's a direct question. Let's say you got two questions in a different way and you answer accordingly. Now let's look at the solution essay. What do you get in the solution essay? Solution essay, again, the instruction can come to you in different ways. One can be that uh, 
these days the youngsters uh, are getting addicted to netflix what are the reasons for it so if the instruction is what are the reasons for it you're going to write only the reasons it can also be what are the reasons for it and what can be a possible solution so you're going to write both the reasons and the solution or the instruction can come this way that uh, these days the youngsters are getting addicted to netflix what is the solution for it in this you'll have to write only the solution so you have to understand what kind of essay you've got you should understand the instruction given to you read reread the instruction before you start answering your question because according to the instructions you generate content and then you write your body paragraphs you write the examples in the body paragraphs to support your point so understand the instructions so all these different types of essays require a lot of practice you must practice all you should write at least 250 words so write that it's a formal piece of writing so you should have good vocabulary also and then how you structure each type of essay needs a lot of practice so practice before you take the exam now let's understand how to structure these different types of essays how do you write the introductory paragraph the body paragraphs the concluding paragraph how many paragraphs should there be let's understand that now your ielts essay can have four to five paragraphs why four to five paragraphs it'll depend upon the instruction that you get for instance uh, let's look at the discussion essay if you just get the instruction discuss both then you'll have two body paragraphs introduction and the concluding paragraphs will be there in all so in between the number of body paragraphs changes so if it is just discuss both you're going to have two body paragraphs if it is discuss both and give your opinion now here if you give one sided opinion then again only two body paragraphs but if you give a balanced opinion a slightly different one then you'll have three body paragraphs similarly let's look at the advantage disadvantage essay if you are given this instruction what are the advantages and disadvantages of this trend then in one body paragraph you write the advantages another paragraph you write the disadvantages but in case the instruction is this do you think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages then whichever side you feel you've got less points that sh side should have one paragraph suppose the advantages are more then you'll have two paragraphs for advantages and one paragraph for disadvantages so you'll have three body paragraphs so the first paragraph that's the introductory paragraph should be of around 35 to 60 words and uh, you in include two things in this one is the background statement now what's this background statement is the paraphrase of the question statement in the question you get that opinion or a statement is given to you like i said uh, some people think that formal that homeschooling is better some people think that homeschooling is better than uh, formal tutoring while others opine that formal tutoring is better so you need to paraphrase this say this in your own words same meaning without changing the meaning so paraphrase the question statement then what else if you're asked to give your opinion then you must include your thesis statement so your thesis statement is your answer to the instruction it's an introduction to your ideas so you must include the thesis statement so the first paragraph that's the introductory paragraph includes these two things then there are two or three body paragraphs so each body paragraph must have a topic sentence supporting statement or statements and an example to support your point it must include these three things a topic sentence supporting statement and an example and then a concluding paragraph 
Now, what do you write in the concluding paragraph? In the concluding paragraph, you paraphrase what you say in your first paragraph. So whatever you said in your first paragraph, you just say that in different words in the concluding paragraph. You paraphrase your thesis statement here. How many words should you write? At least 250 words. So to be on the safer side, practice writing between 270 and 290 words. There's no need to write more than 300 words. Instead, you focus on uh, the other areas because remember, there are different parameters. There are criteria for the way your essay is assessed. So you focus on those. Ensure that your spellings are correct. Ensure that you, your, you show grammatical range. You have accuracy. So how are you assessed in the IELTS writing task too? What are the parameters for it? You are assessed in four areas. One is task response. So now, do you notice each has the same weight, 25%? You get a separate band score in each, and then the overall band score is calculated. The highest band score that you can get is nine. Now in task response, what is seen in the task response? Does your answer, your essay, answer the instruction? If the question is about like this way, discuss both and give your opinion. Have you included both the things? Have you discussed both the sides and given your opinion? Then your thesis statement, does it answer the instruction? The topic sentence of each body paragraph, the examples that you include in each body paragraph and the conclusion. If all these are correct, Accordingly, you get points for your task response. Now, when we have different points, we put them in a proper order. There has to be a logical flow of points and all those points should be connected also. So we should use connectors such as however, moreover, furthermore. And of course, the points should not be all mixed. They need to flow from one to another. So that's what coherence and cohesion is. The points should be properly organized in your essay. You should have well-organized paragraphs. The third area is the lexical resource. Lex goes with words. So what's lexical resource? Your vocabulary. It's a formal piece of writing. So you should use a range of vocabulary, a high level vocabulary. Do not use contracted forms. Do not use idioms. Do not use those common phrases because this is a test of your language. Write it in your words. And the fourth is grammatical range and accuracy. So grammatical range, you should have different sentences. Your essay should be a good mix of simple compound and complex sentences. Some in active voice, some in passive voice. And gerunds also should be there here and there begin the sentences. Now, this is where you need some practice. How to include a complex sentence in different paragraphs. While reviewing also, you can do that. So if you are preparing for the IELTS writing test, you must practice including complex sentences. And also ensure that there is accuracy of grammar. Subject to of agreement should be correct. The articles should be inserted correctly. Then of course the punctuation. And yes, in lexical resource, you should also take care of the spellings. There are many students who use good vocabulary, but go wrong with the spellings. So obviously they do not get the marks for that. So what are the essentials for a good writing task to response? An answer that can get you a good band score. You should be clear about what your essay should include. So what should your essay include? The introductory paragraph, the body paragraphs, the concluding paragraph, the introductory paragraph should have the background statement and your thesis statement. The background statement should be a paraphrase of the question statement. Each body paragraph should have a topic sentence, supporting statement or statements, an example, 
Then the concluding paragraph should paraphrase what do you say in the first paragraph? That is your thesis statement. Your essay should include your response to the instruction for a particular situation given in a question to you. So what should be the structure of your essay? Your essay should have four to five paragraphs. The first paragraph should be the introductory paragraph, the last, the concluding paragraph, and in between two or three paragraphs, according to the instruction that you get, according to the type of essay that you get. The next one is the way you connect your points. So how should you connect your points? Use linkers, use connectors. On the one hand, on the other hand, conversely, on the contrary, moreover, however, although, in conclusion, to conclude, for instance, for example, to exemplify, use such connectors to connect your points. You need to link your points. Now, what kind of vocabulary should you use? Formal vocabulary. It's a formal piece of writing through a range of vocabulary. And how can you be careful about grammar in your essay? Of course, this needs practice too. Most of the students uh, falter over here. Understand the different types of sentences, simple, compound, and complex. Understand how you can change two simple sentences into complex sentences so that you have a complex sentence in different paragraphs. Understand the articles, the tenses, the subject verb agreement, and the punctuation. If you're careful about these, you can get a fairly good score in this area and practice is needed for practice you can always come to uh, unolearning.com you get your personalized live ielts classes at affordable prices over here so what are you waiting for come and join us practice and get a high band score the ielts writing test like many others all the best